since Spaces is powered by the Ministry of Retro Gaming. Warning, strong language is used in this video. The Since Spaces Show, episode number 4. Pokemon cards. Yes, I've gone back in the Pokemon cards recently. Right, quiet on the set. <laughs> G'day invaders and welcome to this inspe- You are fucking kidding, aren't you? <laughs> are you fucking- You said you said it to silent. Oh yeah, dude. My bad. That's, that's timing. Since Spaces. G'day invaders, welcome to Synth Spaces, and this is episode four of the Synth Spaces show. Take four now, is it? Anyway, so we've just had a bit of issue getting set up, but we are live. And we're also live on Twitch, so if you haven't already done so, you might want to follow me on Twitch. It is twitch.tv backslash forward slash one or the other Synth Spaces. Uh, we are going to have an awesome show here today. I should know because we've already done it before. Um, we've got Uncle Chunt. Hello, respect the beards. <laughs> and we've also got John. How you doing there, matey? Hey, good, thanks. <laughs> got Retro Kaiser. How you doing? Pretty good. And I'm joined for the first time, and it's taken 260 videos to get to this point. Two and a half years. Joined by my brother here in the in the studio live, Wayno. How you doing? Oh, most jubilant. Thank you. Most jubilant. <laughs> it was splendid before. <laughs> 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 this is going up and up. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to start with intro questions and John, first off, can you mm -hmm. give me the name of the, ch um, do you have a YouTube channel that you want to plug? No, I, I don't really. Well, I mean, I guess the Gamer System YouTube channel. We've only got one video up there, but, uh. Let's start. Yeah. yeah. It's just Game the System Co. Game the, uh, do you, you do Twitch or a, a yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I've got my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Wago, which is H W A Y G O H Wago. It will be down there on the bottom as I post to edit this in. Uh, and we're going to start with the intro questions. So the very first console and the first game that you played on it. Mm. Uh, my first console was the Sega Master System. So because um, that's got the Alex Kid built in, that was the first game, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I think I, um, yeah, I've heard of that one. Um, <laughs> yeah. the I, I don't, I don't remember anybody that growing up that had a, um, a NES, maybe one or two kids, but everybody other kid that I knew had a master system. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm glad I, you didn't call it Alex the kid. Like, oh, like, oh, well, I trigger, did when I was trigger little. warning, trigger. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, what was your first sorry your favorite game of all time favorite game of all time i think i have to go with the marvel versus capcom 2. there's so many great games as we were talking about before and i'm sure i could name many others but uh yeah that game is pretty special for me um hell yeah, yeah. did you have the satin version no i didn't i played it on dreamcast first and then i had it on xbox for a while that's probably where i played it the most xbox but nice. um i want to get that i've this... got the dreamcast version now and nice. it's it's a little pricey um but it's really awesome i'm glad i bought that game 15 years ago when it was only worth 70 bucks <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too much more than that but i yeah. mean for a retro game that's you know yeah yeah um the satin version i think was a special one because it actually had an extra cartridge that you had to have with it for the expansion uh for the memory oh, wow. otherwise it, you, you oh actually you could play it without it but it, if you had the cartridge you got extra frames of animation it's yeah really wow. cool so, bit of um yeah engineering I for back remember in that time marvel versus capcom 2 being on the um, sega saturn i remember x-men um, versus street Fighter. no you know what i might be getting marvel one of the games yeah, he's right. yeah, it might be the first one the might be the first marvel versus capcom so you're no, right that, that yeah. wasn't on there it, uh, the, no, it wasn't street the Fighter versus, Street Fighter yeah, X-Men yeah, is what I'm thinking Street Fighter X-Men and Marvel vs. Street Fighter. I knew there was okay. a Marvel one because the the yeah. uh, Hulk was the really impressive looking sprite 
and oh, yeah. his, anim his animations were just ridiculously good on the Saturn, and and that was something that the PlayStation owners could only look at and dream of having on on that console, um, because as we all know, Saturn handled 2D better than the PlayStation. Mm. Just couldn't handle anything else better. <laughs> and you can actually tag in those games on the Saturn version. On the PlayStation 1 version of X-Men vs. Street Fighter, you couldn't even tag. You have to wait until one person gets knocked out before the other player comes in. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Because then it had to load it in. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's, that That's... sounds very raw, man. Are you still dealing with this? Or... Like, um... <laughs> <laughs> quite yeah and uh, <laughs> I got, I got a, just one question there um, for you there one last one john uh, favorite mm -hmm. game of all time or two more questions favorite game of all time was that uh, sorry what are you currently mm. playing sorry currently playing uh i've been playing a lot of the resident evil 2 remake which is really awesome um yeah that's pretty much it i was playing wonder boy 3 before that on oh, awesome. the switch um, but I'm kind of stuck. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I, I can't get. Talk past to me. Talk to me. I'm, I'm good at this. I, I, I'm, I've handled many calls on on the boy free. Big hotline man right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm okay. So I'm Lion Man now, and I just got the ability to break the blocks. So I've broken the blocks, gone down to the sewer, and then gone. There's a room with like the three drop holes. Does that sound familiar? You drop while. down and then you go, <laughs> you go left, and then it's like you're in an underground area, and you go through that, and then you go up to like the first time you see the ninjas. Ah, oh, I know that part. Okay, uh, I'll no, get. I just yeah, yeah, I'll get back to you on it. But um, yeah, I do know <laughs> the part you're on. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I must be close to the end. I think you are, because most of the times, most of the calls we got. Uh, were for how to get the Thunder Saber. A lot of people couldn't work out how to get the Thunder Saber. Um, I don't back, think I'm that back oh, in yeah. the day. So, well, if you're the lion, I think you got it. Oh, really? you needed to break. You needed that to break. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and <laughs> we used to have a code if we were talking to a friend because we used to get friends call in and personal calls. <laughs> and and rather than it making it sound like we're talking to a friend, if the bosses or the managers will walk past, we used to say. Um, yeah, to get the Thunder Saber, and that was like co code <laughs> to say the boss is here, i got to go. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll never forget that. <laughs> that's gold. Um, I've already asked everyone mostly here the intro questions, except you, mate. No, what is your no. first game ever? First game ever was uh, Galaga, okay? Pronunciation <laughs> is Galaga. We're not going to have this discussion again. Um, Galaga, Galaga. <laughs> Speaking of Galaga, I just learned uh, yesterday about the Galaga cheat. Do you guys know about that? Oh, um, what, the oh. cabinet? No, there's a cheat in the arcade version yeah. where in the first stage you leave these certain two monsters alive, or ships, aliens, whatever, um, and you oh, just have to dodge yeah. their fire for like 15 minutes, and after a while they stop firing, and then for the rest of the game, no ships will fire at you. <laughs> yeah. has, this, has this been tested? Or is this? Like... Yeah, apparently it works. Yeah, it's something to do with the way it was programmed. Apparently, they were programmed with the counter for firing, and yeah. once it runs out, they just stop. Let me guess: two hundred and fifty-six shots fired. <laughs> I don't know. I just two hundred and fifty-six like seems to be a magic number that glitches out a lot of these old programs. Mm -hmm. um, if you reach, for example, uh, the two hundred and fifty-six level in Pac-Man, that's the glitch level. It's it's something to do with the way yeah. it um cal I I don't memory know yeah the yeah. memory the memory uh, just runs out so mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna have to look in I've never heard of that before no first first no. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah back to your first that was at a fish and chip uh, shop and I chip believe shop at Miranda, Miranda Fair, yeah so local Westfield yeah and uh, what was your first well, you didn't have a console. What, you, what was your first console? My first console was the Sega Game Gear. So, console, <laughs> portable, I don't know. And Did what happened that to that Game Gear? <laughs> we don't want to go there. We do not want to go there. Yeah, we do. Uh, I want to hear the story. I want to hear the story. <laughs> I led my valuable Game Gear. It was my life, everything. And to my brother oh, well. here. Which I got for you who, on staff discount. in the back of his car. And, uh, yeah. Oh. Someone oh, broke no. into the car and stole this Game Gear. It had oh, a beautiful case. 
nice case, had all the games inside it. Every, TV tuner. Uh, yeah, the back, uh, the TV tuner. <laughs> master oh master system had adapter. A whole lot gone in one. Oh moment. wow, that's, so, that's not as bad as what my brother did with my Game Boy. What my little brother did with my Game Boy was he borrowed it because he needed to go to the toilet and he accidentally flushed it down. Right. Oh, well, it went God. down the. It went <laughs> through the S bend. And it came back up. Wow. <laughs> it just didn't work after no, that. No, it, it surprisingly it did work. It just had a nice fancy um, water effect in the screen. Had a good smudge <laughs> on the screen, yeah. I always thought the graphics were shit on that thing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing to have a TV tuner back then. Yeah, to be able was. to watch TV. Yeah. That was something only rich people could do. Well, <laughs> I used to have to travel to school on a bus, and I'd be watching you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something in the afternoon. Just before <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that is was, so cool. Did you have um, kids gathering around watching it with you? Uh, or? Some people tried to, you know, sneak over. And I was like, but, was, but the screen was so crap, you couldn't <laughs> see it. You had all the girls, mate, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Hey, you uh, want to come sit next to me and watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. I remember having that thing going to... Um, I had to work on a late shift and I, at that time, had never missed a State of Origin. And I've watched every State of Origin up until that point. And I thought, how am I going to get to watch this? I know, TV tuner. So I was watching it <laughs> at the bus stop on my way home. And this old guy walks past and he saw what I was watching. What's the score, mate? <laughs> it was just weird. Like, that that was way ahead of its time, yeah. Yeah, cool. Like, those novelties, they were very, very cool when you look at them now. But everybody takes that shit for granted. Yeah, now, but back then everywhere. it was just... Uh, it was yeah, just awesome when you see something like that. Just video mm -hmm. cameras. Like, mm -hmm. video cameras were, like, rare. Someone had a video camera. I was like, "Oh wow, these guys must be loaded." <laughs> top yeah, loader yeah. had one. Yeah, everyone's no got a top camera. loader had one. <laughs> yeah, easy to say. Uh, right. So, and your favorite game of all time? Yeah, as everyone can imagine, it's a hard question, but uh, I'll, I'll just say Skyrim because every time you go into that game. Uh, you start from scratch, and you're going to have a different experience each time. You know, so much to do. And yeah. how many systems have you got that for? <laughs> uh, I've actually got on just three systems. Uh, so three sixty. Only three. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get. I don't want to get on the Switch, but I've I've uh, got it on the PS3, the Xbox 360, and the Xbox One. Nice. And, I love that game. And yeah, just there, brilliant. you can see in the background the uh, guide <laughs> the for guide it. guide right above his figure. Yep. Yeah. And that's a thousand pages. Yeah. Holy dooly. It's <laughs> ridiculous. It explains wow. the bio of every NPC in the game. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite town <clears throat> township in that game was the Dwar uh, I think it's the Dwarven one. Uh, it's up in the mountain somewhere. Oh, we lost chance. I only oh, like the most Sorry, we lost you there for a second, matey. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, in Skyrim, um, my favourite section of that game, I bought the most expensive house that I could in the, um, whatever the Dwarven um, village city thing was. You know, where you walk in and there's gold, uh, it's like massive stone oh, walls. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, I had, had such an awesome place there. And then I had to turn the game off and come back to reality and um, depressing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and we just hit it down though. Thanks, Chunk. <laughs> and what hey, you... <laughs> can, I, can I ask something? It's probably a stupid question, but what's the graphical difference like between the 360 and Xbox One version? Is it a lot better? Uh, or? It has, it has I been. Say, actually, I think the 360 handle it holds. Well. It holds up. Uh, it, it holds up. Uh, it's still playable now. If you got into it now, and after playing it on a high-end PC, for example, something like that, it, it's not unplayable. Um, no, I think it fares rather well. Uh, yeah. I did. I, I don't think the PS3 handled it as well, though. I I don't think it mm. handled it as well as the 360 did, which is strange because the spec. That was quite, be... yeah, a bit of a talking topic at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that the 360 was just killing it compared to the PlayStation with that game in particular. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Although it, the PlayStation 3 is supposed to be the more superior machine well, yeah, the two, exactly. isn't it? On, on, the, yeah. on the specs but yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the cell processor is well known for being very difficult to um, optimize and uh, develop for 
Yeah, so, I remember Bayonetta having similar kind of issues. That was right? the game I was trying to think of. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, yeah there was one particular game that was um, uh, spoke, uh, talked about a lot at the time about how the port on the PlayStation 3 was just absolutely hideously bad. Yeah. Yes. And there was no patch. They never patched that. And that was back in the time when it shipped. If it ships, it shipped. <laughs> most, most of the expansions Good old days. Were, were hitting the 360 <laughs> first anyway, before they would go onto the PS3. Yeah, kind of, well, Western games, they, they took a little longer uh, to come out on the PlayStation 3, it seemed, back then. Um, and w sorry, and I was going to ask you, what are you currently playing? Uh, currently playing... Oh, I'll just go... So, I'm a, I can't play one game at one time because I, I like JRPGs, so uh, getting into this one here, Tales of Vesperia, oh, Definitive oh Edition. My. Yeah, nice. Uh, I originally, this got me into the Tales of series, uh, when I got it on the 360, when it was exclusive to 360, and then they released it on the PS3 in Japan, and it had extra content, and for 10 oh. years, we didn't have access to that content until now. So yeah, oh, happily, I, hate, I hate that stuff. Oh, and mm. uh, Bandai, Bandai Namco, they're, they're bandits for doing it. Uh, they did yeah, it bandits, with uh, Bandai bandits. Yeah, <laughs> um, they also uh -huh. did. They also did it with uh, Eternal Sonata. They uh, had that as an exclusive uh, on the Xbox 360. Then they come and released it on the PS3 and added extra characters. It's like, oh, oh so, boy, yeah. goddamn. Yeah, so they. I think they really mistreated uh, Microsoft there a little bit by offering well, that... an exclusive and then going <laughs> back on it. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Tales of uh, Vesperia there, and also in between. Um, What's that? Uh, What's that? Game? Game? What's that? <laughs> Smash Brothers. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new game. Uh, apparently, people are liking it. I'm not sure. no, I haven't, never haven't heard, of, heard of, it. of it. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to get stuck into the questions now. Uh, first question is from. Uh, Brian Thomas from uh, Twitter. Brian, take it away. Hi guys, it's Brian again with another question. Now, the question goes like this. The genre is that it took you a long time to master, but you love them ever since. Don't worry about the cat. <laughs> Two of mine is fighting game the first person. Sure, this is Duke Nukem 3D, 20th anniversary collection. Love this game to death. It took me a long time, but it was worth to play it and taken three. Another game that took me a long time to master, it was well worth it, because it unlocked almost everything, it unlocked the final character. It's going to take me a long time since he is a little bit of a jerk, because he stayed on the ground half the time. <laughs> I can't wait to hear your guys' answers, and let me know what genres that came your favorite over time. It took me a long time to learn these. Let me know, guys. I can't wait to hear your answers. All right, so thanks there, Brian. Uh, who wants to kick in with the response to that? Mm -hmm. I can go. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think it's the uh, like run and gun action platformer, uh, probably action platformer more so, I would say. Um, you know, like Castlevania, Super Metroid, that kind of thing. In Back in the day, I think I, as a kid, didn't really have the the attention span to get through all the really tough stuff. But now as an adult, I'm coming back to it and really appreciating the challenge. But not that I wouldn't say that I've mastered it at all. Because <laughs> um, I'm really bad at those games. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's why I'm playing through Wonder Boy 3, really enjoying that. I don't know if you'd call that an action platformer, would you? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I you, yeah. You're, you've got action while on platforms, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what about you, Chunt? Um, yeah, look, uh, touching back on that uh, JRPG um, topic, um, yeah, I think I've come to appreciate JRPGs a lot more these days as I get older. One of those things, um, I never really play them. I think the last one I played was on Super Nintendo, whatever it was. I cool. can't remember what the game was called. But um, yeah, and then I came back, my mates were playing Final Fantasy VII, and uh, that was kind of good at the time, but I just found that to be way too complicated at that age for me. I was mm -hmm. like, nah, this isn't, I can't, I just can't do it. And um, But then when PS2 came around, Final Fantasy X came out and that just grabbed me. I loved that game. I, I played that all the way up to the end and I was surprised by myself. Um, 
I didn't think I would get into it, but there's something about it, the, the world and the characters and the style and art style and everything that just, just grabbed me. And uh, my brother had a PS2 and he had the game. I had the Xbox at the time. So we, um, yeah, you, we had, were... you had a hot for you now. Let's just get it. Get it out there. Uh, <coughs> Lulu, excuse me. <laughs> um, Why not? Yeah, he likes the gothic ones. <laughs> yeah, you know, she, she's, uh, she's, she, there's something about something that's there on her i'm not nah, she's, sure she's too scary <laughs> yeah and, um but yeah she was she's you know she's a pretty uh, interesting character but i i, I liked walker as well he's pretty cool um as a character i thought i but, thought he um, was the best character in the whole game yeah, and it was good value it was refreshing to see uh it was kiwi wasn't he the, the... Uh, more hawaiian yeah, Polynesian. It yeah. was good to see a Polynesian sort of uh, accent in the game. Yeah, and, I mean, and like I'm... that game, Final Fantasy up until then, it was all like kingdoms and like you know fantasy yeah. stuff, and and then they've got this new, completely new world, and it's bright coloured and you know everything, and I was like, wow, this is great, and uh, I enjoyed it more than I actually thought I would, and that that led me to like Lost Odyssey and and uh, Blue Dragon on 360. I was like, yeah, yeah cool, you know? And uh, I just fell into those games. It's still not one of my favorite genres to play, but I've learned to appreciate it more over time. Um, uh, I remember Blue Dragon. Playable. Playable. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> well, vaguely, it's been a while. <laughs> uh, it, it would have this weird sort of robot voice that would tell you what's, what status the game is in. Playable story. <laughs> and it, yeah, it was just weird. But um, no, it, and, it, and it had the same musician uh, that did uh, Final Fantasy. Oh man! The and the same and the same same artist that drew uh, Dragon Ball Z, Z characters. That's right. Yeah. yeah and the same studio that did Lost Odyssey. Did How did yep. that game not Weird. sell more? Like it, it just it, it's just this anti uh, Xbox thing that was going on at the time in Japan. And Lost Odyssey is it. just awesome. Like I love Lost Odyssey. I, I again, like you said, I don't know why those two games um, should have been huge. That, that intro on Lost Odyssey. That, yeah, I'm yeah, big time. It, it's just, it's a hook. <laughs> yeah. you, you just can't help but bite on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Retro Kaiser, what about you? This genre that I only just got in through my like fifth plane of um, Symphony of Night. Yes, it took me a while to get into like the sub genre of action platformers known as the Castle Rides genre. Oh, uh, Castlevania. Uh, no, Metroidvania style games, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, pre I prefer to call it Carpet Roids. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've never heard that. Carpet roids? Castle roids. Castle roids. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, sound check. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Maddie. Like, you're breaking I just up. Like pissing off the, I just like pissing off the hardcore Metroidvania fans because, um, yeah. But it's anyway. It's so easy, right? I know. You just That's go, not, oh, yeah. Castle roids, and it's like, how fucking dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Trigger warning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it took me a while to get into that genre. What really started to get me back in, or not back into what started to get me into it was my um, third time trying to play Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Like, the reason why I wasn't particularly a fan of this kind of genre was, quite simply, I got lost too easily. It was just like, <laughs> where am I? Uh, this game sucks. Whoosh! <laughs> um, I, I feel the game that, though, I know what you're saying, that you, you just don't know where to go. Um, but I think it was um, not Met not Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo, but it, was that one that actually showed you which areas you unlocked as you go? Does the map update live is what I'm getting at? Is that the Metroid um, Fusion on Game Boy Advance? Yeah, well, the, first game that, the first game that did that, I think, was... Oh, I don't was know the... if that was the first one, but yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, because like, uh, for example, if you want to really go back, Fantasy Star, you had to draw your own maps. You had to get the grid paper. And, <laughs> man, you had to go one step, draw a line. Go one step, draw a line. And, <laughs> yep. And um, on the Switch, though, the, the Sega Ages version, um, the maps auto update for the mm. first time in that game. Mm. Oh, nice. Wow, what a difference huge. it makes. It's like <laughs> it a makes... huge difference. The original Metroid didn't even have a map. No. No, it didn't. No, you just had to remember, mm. uh, and and there was nothing in the backgrounds that made the yeah. each level unique. It was just black in the background, yeah. so you really had to have a 
uh, good memory and just be mm. switched on. How good were 80s kids playing games compared to now? Yeah, uh, pretty, <laughs> we're pretty spoiled and handheld now, yeah. <laughs> oh, we used to use the cheat section a lot, though, back then. And the hotline. <laughs> and the hotline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of people calling, I tell you. Um, <laughs> all right, well, thanks, Brian. I hope we answer that to a degree. I, my answer to that would be just JRPGs in general. Um, Although, to be fair, I have been playing JRPGs for quite some time, 86 onwards or 87 onwards, I'd say. Uh, mm. Being Fantasy Star being my first ever uh, JRPG, and I've just been hooked on the series since. But I found it lately that the, the JRPG games, have some of them have just gotten ridiculous with the amount of insane detail that mm. yeah. you... Micro management. You know, yeah. oh, you have to yeah. manage everything. Um, there's a game that just got announced. What dropped yesterday? What's that um, royal ba- uh, battle royal game that just uh, in Titan? Apex. Apex yeah, Apex. Yeah, Apex. Yeah. There's a feature in that that I heard. I, I listened to a um, IGN podcast. I was talking about it, and there was one feature that made my ears prick up and go, "Finally!" <laughs> and that is when you, if you walk over an object, an, an item, or an upgrade, if it's not better than the ones you got, you won't pick it up automatically. Huh. So it would That's just good. ignore it. Simple but good. Yeah. Instead yeah. of having to go, all right. Actually, in a way, it's kind of my fi- uh, favorite part of this game, though, is upgrading the um, or the armor, etc. But it does get tiresome that every yep. every I ten love minutes. I when they have an optimize button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Auto optimize, yeah. please. Which is <laughs> that game's got it. Um, and. Okay, so uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X has it where it does it for all your objects at once. Yep. Whereas Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii, you have to go into each individual. Actually, you do. Uh, you, you don't have an optimized button on that. I just remembered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sucks. Um, yeah. So Brian, I hope we answered your question, and we're going to get straight into a rather interesting one. We're going to get a question from a sock. <laughs> this one is from uh, Andrew Yoshimura. Mr. Yoshimura, <laughs> take it away. Yeah, g'day. I've got a question for you. Have you seen my other testicle? I can't... Oi, ask a real question. Yeah, all right. Question for Sin Spaces. Now, back in the late 70s, there was a rumour going round that Japan had a 100 yen coin shortage due to the Space Invaders machine. Now, do you think that's true or just an urban legend? Thanks, Uncle Snap Snap out. Testicle. Um, yeah. I hope you find your testicles or other sock or whatever it is you, you got going on in your life there, um, snap snap. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I have an opinion on this, obviously, but who else wants to start? Yeah, I'll just get mine out of the way. I don't have much of an opinion on it. I like interesting stories, and I think it's it's a story, like, cool story, bro. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a believer. I want to believe it, but yeah, that, that's all I'm going to say on it. All right. Okay. <laughs> John? I'm, I'm with oh, Chant. I, yep. I'm with Chant. I hope this coin spiracy isn't actually. Uh... Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <geez>. oh Christ! <laughs> oh, we just hit a new low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> coin spiracy. Love it. Coin do, we need, do we need a horn for him as well? Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have an air horn. I've just got this tacky thing in the meantime to suffice. Um, okay, so you you think it's a, a wives' tale? Uh, no, I've. I might have to edit that part out. That's just me. Turn keep it in. Keep no, it I'm in. keeping it. I'm keeping it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the crazy um, guy that goes. <laughs> Whoa! Holy shit! <laughs> So again, do you agree? So you're, is that your opinion? If you think it's a no, wise tale, back on track. 100, <laughs> I, hope, I hope the 100 yen shortage. What am I from Brooklyn now? Shortage. <laughs> shortage is real because it's one hell of a story and one hell of a history and one hell of a good publicity for Space Invaders. So I hope it's not a coin conspiracy. Uh, I, I think I think it has. I think it's plausible, but not necessarily the 100 yen. I mean, mm. if you take into perspective what 100 yen was worth back then, that one dollar, yeah, so thereabouts, people would be selling their kidney to play Space Invaders if that was the case. So, so I think maybe 10 yen or whatever it was back then. Maybe 10 yen. 
Or... I think 10 yen would have been a more real, or, or maybe two 10 yen coins to, to yeah, play. Yeah, it must but, have been 10 yen. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I, I hope. I don't know, I, I doubt it would be a 100 yen shortage, and I think it would only be in select areas where they don't have mm. better the best access to banks. For example, mm. I, I wouldn't know. It, it is plausible though. I, I don't mm. think it's. Well, it's not uh, like the, the coins stay in the machine and that's it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it <laughs> goes just, to the mystery. It just goes into world. some <laughs> void. Yeah, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean actually, I, I used to have a coin, uh, an arcade machine, Shinobi. He can he can confirm. I'm not making Ch any Challenger. of this up. Was yeah, it Challenger, it was, Challenger was, on was on the top. I didn't have a proper <laughs> Shinobi uh, marquee for it, unfortunately. Oh, nice. awesome. uh, and I ended up selling it, sadly enough. But mm. um, towards the end, I got bored of playing the game because obviously it's just the same game. And uh, I ended up using it as a money box. It is amazing how many coins you could fit <laughs> in that thing. It was huge, big metallic box that the coins yeah, used to go like, into well you reckon 30 centimeters by 30 deep or? i think it was a few hundred dollars worth of coins yeah. after um cashing it in they did not like me at the bank they, <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> this dude walking in with his big box can you cash this in oh shit <laughs> <laughs> um and john do you have a yeah it sounds like a marketing kind of thing although you know, if they're saying 100 yen, maybe the story was made up later. I don't know if the story originates from back in the day or... And yeah, as as uh, you said, they could have just emptied the machines if they needed the coins, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's fun story, but I don't know. I, I don't think I believe it. <laughs> I, I, I suspect the fact that they're saying that it's a 100 yen shortage, uh, that tells me that it was a Westerner that came up with that story because they didn't have a <laughs> grasp of the coin, the the, the actual value of 100 yens yeah. back then. So I, was, I, I was, yeah. I was more thinking it was just children in the school. It's like, ah, oh, did you hear we're out of $1 coins because of the um, Space Invaders? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, really? <laughs> Is that how conversations in like your schoolyard pieces. used to go? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Wayne was. It could be like Chinese whispers, like one place probably yeah. ran out of coins and then that said all of Japan ran out of coins. I've you know? been yeah. to China. I don't know where that expression comes from. They're pretty loud. They Chinese don't whisper. whisper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't go there. You, know, you might trigger something. If you're triggered, please comment down below. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, anyway, so yeah, I, I personally think that yeah, there might have been uh, a calls to ramp up the uh, supply of the yeah. coins at the time, but I don't think it was like uh, to the point where there was just no coins at all. State of emergency. Yeah, yeah. So I I call <laughs> uh, bluff on that one. I think it's bogus. Uh, okay, so uh, thanks. Um, snap, snap, chop, chop. Whatever your name is. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> See you later, alligator. Uh, so the next question comes from our mate Cameron Hans. Now, um, oh, yes. his questions are questions <laughs> that are not a questions question, but they are a question. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. Take it away, Cameron. There are so many meanings out there to own. Just take a look at what is shown. There's the NES, Super Nintendo, and Commodore 2. And the PlayStation Classic U. Now take a listen to what you heard. Why do they keep on making them? It's quite absurd. I want to know something. Yes, that's true. What mini console would be right for you? All right. So first we get a question from a sock, and uh, yeah, now this. <laughs> so um, I personally, I'm going to start with this one. I want a decent Mega Drive. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am sick of these at games or AT games or crap games, mm. whatever they call themselves. There, there was a, a half decent clone which I did review. You can just mm -hmm. barely see it at the top there. Um, it's actually one of my most viewed videos on the channel, uh, and I got that from Japan for about thirty-five bucks, and uh, no one on the internet had posted a video or a review on that thing mm. at that time, so. Cool. yeah lucky me um mm. but that didn't have an hdmi out 
so it, it was kind of restricted and it also couldn't play Virtua Racing uh, it couldn't play um, actually no Virtua Racing was the only one it couldn't play um, it was okay for the most part but this and the sound was all right but I would just like to see an officially endorsed Sega mini mm. console is that really asking for too much from a hardware manufacturing company I know they haven't made consoles since 2000 but they still do arcade games mm. they still know how to make a, a box with a Sega logo on it that plays games so mm. Come on, Sega, just give us the damn thing already. It's, it's not like they're putting out... It's not like there's call for them to be putting out a modern console. It's just a retro, like, emulated machine. Like, I yeah. don't imagine it'd be too much of a demand on their part. Like, I don't think it'd be too hard for them to kind of get some parts and approve it and just get it done, you know? Mm. Uh, I, I agree with you. I'd love to have a, a legit... Uh, mini Mega Drive, as long as as long as it's the Model One design, that's the one that I really like. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Agreed. It's going to be that definitely. Have you guys seen that? There's one. I forget what it's called now, so it's probably useless bringing this up. But um, there's like a a company who made the SNES. They call it like SNES HD or something. I saw it on um, oh, Metal yeah. Jesus, and yep. then now they're doing a Sega one that plays oh, one. yeah yeah Mega CD as well. So and that looks really cool so apparently with that one um they've made that original uh, i'll put a link to it i can't remember off the top of my head it's mm. made of aluminium isn't it the original one it was like real hardcore um yeah. and, I think that's and, what i'm thinking of too and they're doing yeah. a mega drive one and basically the with the super nintendo or super famicom version of that uh it's emulating it to the point where the board is essentially a mock-up super nintendo it's not emulating mm. it it's replicating it so yeah. it's, it's the closest you can get to a modern super nintendo uh mm. and the mega drive ones it's still not out yet the mega drive is to be released is it or it has been released i don't believe it's been released yet no no, no. uh but yeah i should get on that but they're so expensive those ones yeah, they're really expensive. <laughs> it's a bit yeah, ridiculous. they're a premium yeah. product those things mm. um uh retro kaiser what, what console would you like to see this one's an interesting one. I'd like to see a mini console based on um, Konami's MSX2 soft uh, hardware, not software, software on the hardware. But the, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So an MSX2. Then you, yeah. Then you'll be able to play like the original Metal Gear, mm. Herodias, Twin B. I believe even Sui Coden was released for that thing. Now you say you say yeah, Konami, but I don't think it was actually Konami. I think it was Sony. It was like a there was different companies doing yeah. different versions of the MSX. It was like a it's, the closest I can think of that as an example was the 3DO. You had the Panasonic 3DO, which is the more um, well known of the lot. But there was also a Gold Star 3DO, and that's similar to Mega Drive. Mega Drive, uh, the Mega CD. There was a Panas no JVC um mega cd called the wonder eye and the ah. and it had a different name and in america dog mascot, didn't it? and a dog yeah, mascot yeah, yeah. And, and but and i had an american one the american one didn't look good at all it was crap but the japanese one had these led lights all over the place and when you hit the open button the, the lid would open up and it would actually close oh, yes. it was like this is the future <laughs> <laughs> wow um, I, I would like a, not only a Mega Drive but a Mega CD or something that can replicate Mega CD because mm. I want Snatcher on the Mega CD <laughs> to be more available to other people out there without mm. people having to either A, pirate it or B, spend what was the last one that went 700, for? $700 yeah. for that game minimum yeah um, it's not going to happen oh, it's and, and do this as well with this um, mini thing when you actually put in your own cartridges, make it based like on the cancelled Sega Neptune, where it can also play um the 32x cartridges without needing the big mushroom attachment. Yes, the <laughs> the, the Sega Neptune, the best console that Sega never released. <laughs> that could have kept. I mean, after um, expanding the lifeline of the Mega Drive for a few years until the Saturn came out. I don't know. That was a weird period in Sega's history. I think the Neptune mm. sounded like a great idea, but they should have just went straight on to Saturn and made the Saturn Mega Drive compatible. That mm. may may have maybe uh, 
been enough to it, get it across the I remember line. seeing pictures of the Saturn before it was coming out with the little cartridge slot at the back. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh my god, like I'll be able to play my Mega Drive games on this yeah. too. Damn. Mm. <laughs> yeah. How, how wrong was I? Yeah. Um, but Wayne, what would you like to see? Uh, game Gear. I, so you can get a Game Gear back. Nah. <laughs> Actually, um, <laughs> I'm not really into these mini consoles that have been coming out because they, they haven't been doing the... Oh, oh, Super Nintendo was quite a good one, and Mini NES, I'll pay. Mm. Uh, PlayStation, just leave that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a Mini Dreamcast. Um, yeah. Just mm. mostly because uh, yeah, I like JRPGs, and some of them are on multiple disc. I'd like to have a not changing the disc, <laughs> just to <laughs> accommodate my fat ass and laziness. You know, like I could just stay there and not change the disc. That'd be great in proper HD. That'd be yeah. That'd be a cracker. You know, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be down for that. Yeah. The Dreamcast seems to be like, uh, the, how do you say? Like I don't know, fragile or like they seem to be slowly dying, slowly becoming extinct as the hardware fails. I don't know if that's because of the hardware itself, or maybe it just seems that way because there's so many more PlayStations out there. You know what, though? Uh, a lot of those Dreamcasts, we're staring up there because the mine yeah. is, is up on the shelf there. Uh, the the problems that you'll find with the Dreamcast, a lot of them are actually easy to fix. Even mm -hmm. I could fix it just watching a YouTube video and replicating what the guy did, and it brought mine, and I fixed his back again as well. Uh, uh, it's, a co it's a common uh, fault with them that uh, the power... Um, there's four prongs that, or six prongs that stick up, and over, over time, they kind of bend. And uh, with the heat, you need to put them back into place to keep the connection going. Technical, mm. boring details, but essentially what I'm getting at is it's not that hard to fix them. Uh, mm. and the laser is not that bad on them, actually. They're, no, they're pretty, pretty, pretty good. good. Um, better than the cleans. better than the PlayStation, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. I might add something to this conversation if you don't mind. Yeah. Is that alright? Yeah, yeah. Go, I'm cool. waiting. Yeah. Um, I just picked up. One of these. It's the Duke. Oh, yes. oh the duck. <laughs> the duck. <laughs> yeah. So this is essentially my mini console representative. Because <laughs> I'll be able to play some backwards compatible games on Xbox One. With do, you, do you know the backstory behind why it got the name the Duke? Um, oh, I just thought it was a term of endearment because it was so big. Kind of, kind of, but there's a little more to it than that. So uh, one of the guys that was designing the Duke, it was actually a uh, female. Uh, yep. uh, that was involved in it, but one of the team members had a kid, and the kid's nickname was Duke. So, oh, right, okay. Yeah. So I, they, I don't think um, I've heard Seamus uh, mention that. It, it's official. Name. The controller is named after fat children. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought it was the Duke. Like, um, Whoa. <laughs> uh, what's his John name? Wayne. You know, John Wayne, yeah, that's what I, I always thought it was like. That a dagger I see before me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get into that this weekend. Um, you you got that for about 100, wasn't it? I saw it was yeah, reduced they, from they brought, 140. Uh, it was reduced from like 120 something uh, down to like about 100. So oh, I was figured. hoping for a bigger reduction than that. Um, uh, the time. only question I want to know is can it play Doom on the screen in the middle? That's. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it only has yeah, a startup the startup logo, um, and that's it. Hacked it a bit. Yeah, yeah. So when you power it up um, or push the center button in, it'll play the actual Xbox original uh, boot up. And it doesn't video. do anything else. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all it needs to be for me. I don't, I don't need a second screen experience. I'm, I'm a simple like, man. It's got I only have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, what's that? It's got to be better than the Elite controller. Um, like the Elite oh, controller is a fantastic controller, but I, love the, the I have problems with the rubber grips coming away. You too. I, I keep hearing people say that. But yeah, this I've, is my earned... second lot now. This is my okay. second one that's going through the same thing. But... Oh, fair enough. No, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into it this weekend. Um, I want to see how awkward the bumpers are on top, if, if they are or not. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't need it. Look at the size of do... the box. I mean, your hands, they're not dainty hands. And <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to it. I'm going to do a video on it. because I, I know I'm well behind the, the curb on this thing, but I'm so excited. I've waited so long for it. Uh, I want to do something for it. So um, I've held off on opening it so I can actually take some time out today mm -hmm. to do something with it. 
All First right, game well... he's gonna play, Dead or Alive's Extreme Volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> physics. <laughs> yes, physics is all about the physics. Well, thanks, uh, Ken, for that one. Uh, yeah, and keep those questions coming, mate. They're they're really uh, something else. <laughs> Great song. Yeah. So uh, the next one is from my old mate Tim from the Sega Hotline. Um, Tim, what have you got for us? Yeah, g'day. Um, I've finished my work for today and I'm looking really sexy with some headphones in front of the pub in South Melbourne. So, question for you guys, so I'll get the right angle there for you. Uh, would you say Fallout 76 is the worst ever game ever produced in the modern era? Um, I believe it's worse than even E.T. <laughs> for the Atari 2600. Tell me what you think, guys. And um, I better get back in there and have another beer. Uru. <laughs> All right, Tim, I uh, hope you didn't, didn't get too sloshed at the pub that day. Um, yeah, let uh, guys, uh, all out 76. <laughs> this yeah. topic that just keeps coming back. Yeah, it's a sad state of affairs. It really is. Um, I... I have no care for the game, and most people that I know that have tried it no longer play it. Um, the clarification on that question is, is it the worst modern game ever made? Um, yeah. And I would say no, because there's worse games on Steam. But um, <laughs> if it's the worst AAA type game made you know, in today's modern scape, then yes, I would completely agree. Mm. It's an embarrassment. Um, Bethesda should be ashamed. Um, their fans, they need to really um, hold them accountable for taking... I think they've taken their fans for granted on this one. Uh, they've rested on their laurels far too long. Uh, oh, the, the Bethesda cute. Um, the, the bugs are so cute yeah. and glitches and all that kind of stuff. It's fine. It's like, no, it's absolute <laughs> bullshit. It's Glit not fine. Glitch Festa, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's not fine. They should not be getting away with this kind of crap. And I think, I want to hope that they've learned something from this. Uh, I, it, I'm hesitant now for the next Elder Scrolls because Skyrim, for all of its beauty and grandeur, um, I love that game, but it was buggy as hell. There's, there's no going around it. And I'm now concerned um, going into the next El El Elder Scrolls because um, I was looking forward to it and now we've got this. It, and if that's the train that they're going on where they're like, oh, that's all right, we'll just put it out. And they'll buy it. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be like, no, I'm not going to buy it. Go to hell. Yeah, that's an interesting point, because one thing that's kind of concerning is, you know, obviously a lot of people bought the game right when it was released. So, you know, is the the effect of them releasing this game so buggy affect the sales of the next game? Or, like, are the, what are the sales Definitely. like? What are the sales like on Fallout 76, though? Like, are they OK? Because, you know, when executives look at the numbers, which is how they judge it, they're going to go, oh, Fallout 76 did OK if it sold well do we know what the sales are like no it's it's been you go you can see it on bargain bins now yeah, it's 25 yeah, bucks no, so everyone's steering clear of it mm. um it would have sold well at the start because no one knew any differently they they expected that because it's got the Bethesda's name to it and fallout that it was going to be another good game uh they got <laughs> sadly disappointed um i i think it 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 was the initial sales. Uh, what, what's that statistic? Yeah, statistic that uh, seventy percent or more of all sales come within the first like week, and then after that, mm. that game just dies. Um, Shit. Which is why they, which is why these companies are pushing uh, service for games or game service rather than just putting Ooh. out a title and relying on all of its sales in one week. Um, it I've, also doesn't. It also doesn't help that when. Um, Fallout 76 was being sold. It also doesn't help that um, Bethesda accidentally leaked out all the people that, all the names and um, personal details of all the yeah. people that bought that game. It's did so much oh, stuff what? surrounding this game. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Comedy of errors. And, and also the DLC. Uh, what was it? The uh, for people who bought the uh, limit, the limited edition yeah, super the, the bag. The, the, bag. The bag. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, you were promised a cloth bag and they pulled back on it didn't they they and they gave those bags out to media and uh you know sort of uh, uh, influences 
I thought they promised like a military grade bag, but when they sent it out, they got like a cheap, flimsy little yeah, thing. It, yeah, it was meant to be. It's meant to come with a campus bag. Everybody got a, a nylon bag instead. That's mm. it. Yeah. And it and it just looked terrible. Um, yeah. And then when they promised to reimburse people with in-game credit, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't enough to actually <laughs> buy that ga uh, bag in the game, which is yeah. kind of ironic. Um, There's and... so much negativity around this game. <laughs> it's insane. And I, I was watching that uh, E3 with a bit somewhat skepticism, but uh, also anticipation. It was yeah. kind of mixed. Uh, I love the fact that here we have a new lot of vault dwellers that have some cool bit of new technology that they actually have color tv as opposed to the monochrome their ideas were different i was looking forward to it should have been uh, a fallout dlc um and and make it a natural because you know the dlcs on that game have just been for shits and giggles really they haven't really added to the story this would have yeah. been a really good dlc um, but they were just really keen to do an online thing. Um, the only other yeah, online... I, I hope they don't continue on having no. this online thing going. Like, maybe offer it, but also continue on with the solo yeah. play. I, that's what got me into Skyrim, well, Elder Scrolls. Speaking of out. crap uh, announcements, EA uh, just recently... Uh, was recorded as saying that they blame their recent slump in sales on single player games. It doesn't um, make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas all the top selling games in the past five years have been God of War, player games. God, Game of yeah. the Year. Come on. Yeah, they've yeah. all been single player game. <laughs> yeah, he's right there. Oh my god! This whole time. Can you just do me one favor and say, boy, boy. boy. <laughs> boy. Uh, okay, uh, well, so there's some interesting statistics here. Apparently, uh, Fallout 76 sales were down 84% compared to Fallout 4. I was hoping it was 76%. <laughs> and then another funny thing was that GTA 5 sold more copies than Fallout 76 in 2018. Oh. <laughs> Which, I mean, to be fair, it came out on the 14th of November, so it's towards the end of the year, but still. I mean, how old is GTA 5? Oh, that is hilarious. It, really, everyone owns it too. That's GTA. It, I've everyone got it, owns it. I don't have it on Xbox One. I want or oh, PlayStation right. 5. I want to get the modern one because or, modern. Um, but I, I've got the because I, I played the free 360 version. I finished yeah, it. Same. Um, Tre Trevor's just my favorite character of the last 10 years. <laughs> I just love that character, especially the love scenes that happen in that game. <laughs> <laughs> if you leave me now. <laughs> that scene is um, just classic. <laughs> back back to the question, though. Like, uh, I, I want to know how I get a job at Behevza as a quality assurance, uh, part of the quality assurance team. Because <laughs> they're just phoning it seemingly in. Seemingly do yeah. fuck all. Like, yeah. oh, oh, good, yeah. I could do that. <laughs> I could do fuck do all. <laughs> Now I'm picturing um, Bethesda Games and it's being run by Homer Simpson who's sleeping at the bed. <laughs> a bird ticking at the controller, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's a meme waiting to happen. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah, Tim, I hope we answered your question. Is it worse than E.T.? Well, I think it's like the 2018 or 19 equivalent. Yeah, possibly. I mean, E.T. was one dude given less than three weeks or something ridiculous like that to come up with a game that they paid what was the stats i can't remember it was like 70 million that they paid for the license for that game in which meant that they would have had to have sold more copies than there were consoles to make money yeah. back that's, that's genius nice. genius <laughs> who signed that <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got uh, a, a question that's been emailed in by my mate at uh, Game in t uh, Telford, UK. Uh, might need subtitles for this. <laughs> Take it away. Hello there, Brian. How's it going? Oh, absolutely freezing here in the UK. And it got me thinking, what video game has got the best snow or ice level? ta -ra for now. All right, um, yeah, meanwhile, we're here sweating away. It was like a week of 40 degree plus weather. Yeah, so <laughs> snow, what's that? <laughs> but um, I, I think uh, 
thoughts that uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 had probably the best snow scene in a game. What was that fighting game that had the snow effects and the snow would actually would depress as the fighters oh, would dead, go? Dead or Alive 2. Yeah, the that's it. Is, that was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, that's quite good for its time too. Dead or Alive 2 yeah. is so good. Yeah, physics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. boobs, okay? Come on. I'm just calling it out now. Uh, anyone else got a... Uh, oh, I'll call hey. another... Oh, sorry, go on. My favourite snow in a video game has to be Donkey Kong Country. It's quite similar because it looks so gorgeous. Have you played <laughs> oh, Donkey yeah, Are you talking about Super Nintendo? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Had to clarify. I need to play that game more. <laughs> Man, that game is so good. Not Have you good. actually looked at the, the snow levels in um, Donkey Kong Country? They're just stunning. Yep. Yeah, yeah. For for that console, that was just um, the whole game is. It was ridiculous what they were doing on that mach on that console for the time. And again, it took a British company to <laughs> to use. It, it had the people in Nintendo at the time yelling and abusing their staff. Why can't we do that? They were really getting. <laughs> they were really taking it personally, um, which is why they took Rare on in the first place. Um, I also have to add Animal Crossing. The, the, oh. when you go into winter and that and you, you hear the footsteps <laughs> as you're walking over the snow it's pretty cool <laughs> very good very good i was waiting for a cheap plug for your um live stream of that game actually i i don't know if i'm gonna keep going with that i've got so what happens is you get an hour in you've done everything and I, my streams are supposed to go for two hours oh. mm. so i spend an hour going uh okay i can't keep talking to these idiot neighbors they don't really say much so mm. i don't know how much more i've got uh if i'm going to continue that stream i might switch it out for something else just keep digging holes but just dig away <laughs> just yeah, keep digging yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> when the switch version comes out i'll definitely be doing a stream on that don't worry. it's like final fantasy 13 it doesn't get good until about 30 hours in no. <laughs> True. That would be a good top five list. Games that you need to play 20 hours plus to get the most out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first 20 hours are boring and crap. Uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. I, I hate that game at the start. It is just too slow and tedious. I Yeah, I'm not a fan of the intro on that game. Anyone else? Jeez, no one's really uh, got an opinion. Snow Brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I sort of... Um... One game I could think of with snow was The Thing on Xbox. Ooh. I remember <laughs> yeah. snow being in that. Is that good? Because uh, a lot of people include it in their top 10. Uh, I, I didn't play heaps of it. I just remember it starts like in a blizzard. and Yeah, yeah I think I think it, from what I played, it was good. But yeah, I didn't really get to talk about this before. But my problem with the Xbox, and this goes back to our conversation, Chant, about xbox what, games just, on twitter let, let me prepare that just, we we're having <laughs> let, just let me I'll, trigger I'll warning trigger. incoming yeah. trigger <laughs> <laughs> not no no it's it's a personal issue okay so when i bought my xbox i took it straight from eb games or wherever i bought it to parkley markets and gave it to them to put in the box to put a chip into it and i never really bought games for it i know that's really bad now oh, um that. yeah and but but the other problem that happens when you do that is that you never really appreciate the games because they cost you exactly. nothing yeah. you know um so i had a million games and i probably played like 10 minutes of most of them um nice. i played lots of marvel mm. versus capcom too but uh yeah. hey, hey wayne is this sounding familiar <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I i don't i've got no problems with emulating games or yeah things like that yeah it's because yeah. we, we had, uh, back in the day, and I've done a video on the machine, uh, it was a Mega Drive add-on uh, mm. that you put on top, and you are able to switch the games over to disc. Uh, ah. And that meant, and then one day I found out, just through experimentation, uh, that uh, Amigas can copy those discs as well. <laughs> Boom! That just exploded wow. the the swapping, the disc swapping that was going on. We were making, <laughs> and and this is pre-internet. I don't know how these contacts were being made, but we were finding names of people in uh, other parts of Sydney, and we were doing swap meets where we would just exchange games and getting a, a collection going. I think I've got like 120, 150 games. 
Um, is that on like a three inch floppy disk? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So we, when I was working at Sega, I pretty much had a good knowledge of the games simply because <laughs> I was pirating the crap out of them. Um, and I, I was calling it research. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give you the games to play? Yeah, we were allowed to. So we had a cupboard. It's in my video, uh, which is the only video of the Sega Hotline on the internet uh, in Australia. That is. Um, but if you look at one part of it, you'll actually see the cupboard. The cupboard of dreams, as Tim Gadler says in that video. Uh, and uh, he he was in that video as well, actually. Um, and you could actually take the games home. Uh, we would have to put our names down to say that we've borrowed it for tonight. Mm. Uh, and also, we were able to take EEPROMs home. Ooh. Mm. And so, one, I love telling this story because I, I will. <laughs> I, it's just like one of my favorite moments of working at Sega. Uh, being on the bus and the kids behind me uh, who were still high school kids are so, uh, flicking through an EGM magazine and going, Oh my god, the new Street for, um, Streets of Rage game's coming out. I can't wait for this. And they're crapping on. Oh my god, it's going to be 16 megabits. <laughs> and and I. Um, I turned back at them and I said, hey, guys, and I pulled out the ROM. I said, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, only the first, it was only the first level, but that was enough. And yeah, yeah. You remember that, me dragging that home? Uh, I remember Sonic. Um, two. Not Streets of Rage, though. I, I don't remember Streets of Rage. I had Streets of Rage 2. I brought it home, and I played the shit out of that. <laughs> it was just that was such a big jump. So big a jump I compared to the first Japanese one. Japanese version as well. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Streets of Rage, I have to mention Streets of Rage Remake. For any Streets of Rage fans, oh, yeah. you can download it on PC. It costs nothing, and it's the best Streets of Rage. It's fully remade on PC. Um, it's really cool. Is that by Steam, or...? uh no it's just no it's not on steam it's it's like a fan-made game so if you just google streets of rage remake you'll probably find it oh, guys we've um, just got a comment here from about good snow the question that we were supposed to be talking about um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the first question by the way from twitch this is a a, a, a little pivotal moment um it's good yeah so this is from <laughs> lying secret he says good snow two crude dudes not least because that level lets you fight a purple dwarf sander oh, with a sack full of bombs. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Thanks. two crew dudes. I never played that Thanks one. Thanks for that. Oh, it's, yeah, it's good. It's good well, times. For snow, I guess. Or, um, is it? It'll be Rise of the Tomb Raider for me. That whole first section of the game is so good. Um, where you're climbing up that mountain and uh, you know scaling the glacier or whatever. Uh, that, that was great. And... Uh, Amped, my, my first memory of, oh, this is great. Mm, that's a good one, yeah. Amped on Xbox, mm. where you're like carving through the snow, and I'm like, oh, my snowboard is actually parting the snow as I go, and I just notice these little intricacies in that game. And mm. the game was great, I loved it. But that uh, part, I'm more of a tricky person. Tricky! tricky. Oh, yeah, tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I loved Amped. So th those two games are the ones that stand out to me as far as good snow memories. Um, my answer would probably be Skyrim. Um, Oh great! Yeah. Yeah. Your, your answer for everything is Skyrim. No, no. But I, I think, um, <laughs> what are we having for breakfast this morning? Skyrim. <laughs> oh, I just with arrows like, to uh, the knee. Graphically, <laughs> graphically, it wasn't you know cutting edge as far as the effects go. But I think the music sort of added to that effect. It Hell provided yeah. the atmosphere. Um, that that you're it? in a cold, sort of miserable place. So <laughs> I guess that is the reason why I say Skyrim in Last Light. It like, really did a good a job little... of uh, creating and building up the atmosphere that game. It's yeah. just uh, pretty cool. Uh, and we have got one last question, and this one is from Blue Monkey. This was actually uh, added rather late. Uh, and and oh, well, I'll let, I'll let the, the monkey man <laughs> say it himself. Take it away. Hey, Spaces. When you were working at Sega, what was the feeling about Nintendo at the time? All right, thanks, uh, Monkey Man. I mean, Blue Monkey. Um, <laughs> thoughts on, S on Nintendo? It was kind of mixed. I didn't like Nintendo. I kind of looked at them as being overrated. Um, I, I felt that they needed to be knocked off their perch. 
I and... still look at them like that. <laughs> <laughs> They've been knocked off their perch, but they're still making money hand over fist uh, in 2019, which I've got no issue with, but uh, it's just their, the way they treat YouTubers up until just recently and their arrogance. That's a part of the company that I would like to see improved. Um, a, a lot of people would say that they've um, they've earned the right to be arrogant. There might be some truth to that, but no one earns the right to be arrogant. No, no, no. I okay. I do have one thing to add to that though. Um, I have a thing against when at these E3 um, events, people getting up on the stage trying to talk to gamers while wearing a, a, a Marni suit or a yeah. decked out suit. Um, mm. The only people I feel that doesn't look wrong doing that is Nintendo. When they get up there and they're wearing a suit. For some reason, I kind of look at that, that they've earned that right to wear that suit. Because they've been mm. in the game for like, like when when I when Iwata got up there on the stage and he was decked out in a suit, you knew that he was a gamer. It's just that he's wearing the suit for the fact that he's representing the company. I don't know. It's just a weird cultural yeah, thing that... It, it, they're not bullshitting though. Like when they yeah, do it, it's, it's professional, it's honest, yeah. it's earnest, like the polite kind of Japanese kind of thing. Yeah. Where you got the Western business people out there wearing suits and doing it. It's just all... They look like used car salesmen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're just <laughs> selling, selling, selling. And, and they're peddling something <laughs> to me and I'm not sure if I can trust them. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, there, I, just got the, I just got the bad... I just got the bad thoughts of... um. Suit, suit people trying to see his stuff and going, do you not have phones? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, prime example. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he was wearing a shirt, I think, yeah, like, from memory. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm wearing a suit, but... A Xbox man, Phil Spencer, like, he goes up there in, like, game shirts and stuff, you know, and, and, and jeans or whatever. I've shaken that guy's hand. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've met him too. He's, he's, he's really good. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I think he kind of started turning that narrative. And people started taking notice of that. It's not just him, but the, it was around that time period where people started going, "Okay, we need to stop doing like PowerPoint presentations on stage." And mm. yeah, exactly. Kind of and that's the thing that I sit there and go, "You're not trying to sell this to." So I think someone from IGN pointed out that when EG, sorry, EA, uh, when they have a presentation, they're not doing that presentation for you. They're yeah. doing that presentation mm. for their shareholders. Yeah, mm. that's it. And mm. there's a lot of truth to that. They're trying to con they're trying to um, drop names of their most biggest franchises that we all sit there and go, yeah, great. You know, Robert mm. Downey Jr. IRL. You know, like uh, yeah, here yeah. we go. Oh, I, actually, I just heard that next year they're going to be releasing uh, FIFA 20. Did you know that? Oh my God! No <laughs> way! Holy 20, shit, man. No, 21. I, that, well done. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're like, but they have to show that they're definitely mm. releasing that game to keep the shareholders happy. And these are shareholders. A lot of them are not gamers. They don't mm. care. A lot of them are gamers. They, they, they feel that their money's well vested in a, in a hobby that they feel is profitable. Good for them. But uh, I think the majority of those people who've got shares in companies like that have no idea. Um, to, to be fair, those E3 and uh, you know PSX or whatever, like all those events, Gamescom, it's all for industry and press. It's not for us at all. Um, but the they have to game, change that. They really do need to uh, start get, uh, getting into their fixed goals. Oh, I think they're getting better at it. Yeah, like, they need to understand that 2019 is uh, a, a vastly different... Um, setting than the, the old CES shows from the uh, pre-95 era. There was a photo that someone put up recently of two of an Atari <laughs> uh, entertainment booth and also an Activision <laughs> oh, booth. Oh, yeah, Did I you that. see that one? Yeah, that's cool. And there's cool. a guy in, in front of the Activision booth. There's two dudes in suit and one of them has got his hand around the other guy. <laughs> there's all this fake crap that goes on in those, um, in those uh, expos. Um, but... well, I think they're getting better at it though. Like those expos and conventions and stuff, like E3 and Gamescom, blah blah blah. It has to be all industry and press. But where you've got Nintendo doing their directs and you've got inside Xbox, mm. um, those kinds of digital shows, like there's no way billions of people could turn up to an event. So here's our little uh, Xbox Fan Fest, um, whatever PlayStation does. I can't remember what it's called. Um, you know they do their fan events and that's for us or Did those. PlayStation who even do one. 
I think yeah, whatever it's called, there's Tokyo Game Show and then there's <laughs> PSX. I think they might do fan events there. No, no, but I'm talking about like because uh, you got Inside Xbox and then you got uh, the <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> Direct. Can yeah, someone yeah. can someone fill us in on in below that what what the uh, PlayStation is? The what version of that. Called, access? PlayStation Access? Well, there's YouTube channel PlayStation Access, yeah. Oh, okay. But um, it just gives have... you an idea of how bad they've failed with their marketing. That we watch yeah. this stuff all the time and we can't think of it on the top of our head. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I so I mean, yeah. there are avenues for them to talk to us. Uh, it's just it's not going to be those massive reveals, you know, that we all tune into E3 for. Um, you know, they're, they're getting better with it. I appreciate it. Just got a question come in on the twi uh, on Twitch. Uh, Lying Secret again. He's asking, too late to ask a question, probably. No, it's not. Type away. Uh, he's just saying that, um, who was the Australian guy who did all the terrible voiceovers for gaming advertisements and such? He was always reading from a script and had no gaming knowledge. I don't know how you, well, I guess the way he pronounces the name, you'd catch on to that. It was in the 90s. He was also he also presented the worst gaming DVD I've ever seen. I, I would love to see uh, that. that. I would love to do a sit through and and just tear that apart on my channel. Um, <laughs> if you could point out lying secret, if you could point out where you can actually get a copy or, or if that's on YouTube, I would love to do um, yeah a, a watch and. Yeah, Let's I'm watch. Who you'd be talking about? I I don't know. I I only hate the one in EV games. You can get crazy oh. bargains if you join up now. <laughs> oh, Shut up, that, man! I just want to come guy. in here. Yeah, just yeah. get out. Seriously. When I bought Resident Evil Two, the guy in EV is like, "Oh, you made it to level two and I'm like, "Oh, really? How much did I have to spend to get to that?" And it was like <laughs> fifteen hundred bucks. I'm like, "Fuck." Um, but yeah, to answer your question, Lion Secret, no, I'm sorry, we can't answer your question. I, I don't know who knows, but if anyone does know, please leave a comment I down below. Was, I thought it was Richard Wilkins, but I think, oh. um, I think Why'd getting... you have to bring. You, you triggered me now. <laughs> He's old Dicky. Old Dicky. He's oh, a Kiwi. Man. Can we just send him. Can, you, like send, can you have him back? You flush the toilet. He just keeps coming back up. He just doesn't want to flush. You know? <laughs> What is he famous for? He's famous for dating Brooke Shields. That's it. Oh, well, yeah. He hosted MTV back in the day. I think you'll find there's plenty of reasons he's, he's well known. <laughs> he's um, he's a legend in the industry. But, yeah. Um, do do go, please in, in, inform me because I'm just, I'm yeah. lost. It is, you know, around the same time Molly is in the industry. It's that do whole, not, do that, not compare him to Molly Meldrum. <laughs> oh, no way. Like, oh. He's pretty much the same, right? Yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's the wrong <laughs> podcast to get into it. But yeah, no. I think, <laughs> I think giving, um, giving Richard's... Not a podcast, it. Chunt. It's a show, right? <laughs> yeah, right thank, right, you, right. thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think <laughs> See what you started, right. lying secret. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right, um, we'll move. We'll move along to answer. I haven't even answered the question. Um, so, with um, working at Sega back in the day, uh, I had a folder. We didn't have the professional folders that um, that Nintendo have uh, shown since. That they all had. Called them counselors. Like you need to call a counselor. What What are we running here? <laughs> a so, counselor. Wow. We were called Sega Masters. That's, that was our name. <laughs> it's uh, space <laughs> and I had my own folder <laughs> that I made myself because uh, I was the. I, I would dare say that I was the most hardcore Sega fan out of all the guys, in, and I don't think that they would have any issues with me saying that. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had uh, an anti Mario sticker made out, so it was a from a anti smoking sign. And I put Mario in instead, so it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and... I remember the folder you're wow. talking about. Yeah, uh, I've still got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brian used to do this thing. He would get all the gaming magazines and get a scalpel and cut out the character meticulously and put it on clear contact and just put a whole heap of them. Like, Actually, just did hundreds... you cut out their eyeballs as well? No, 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 no nothing like that. Actually, the whole characters. <laughs> He's oh. trying to look for one now while oh, ripping his head off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, he just would spend ages just collecting pictures out of the magazine and it. put it on a click. Here, here we go. He's a classic example here, actually. It's, that is it's, like... And this is it, actually. Okay. So that's. <laughs> oh, oh. Nice. And. Wow. 
I hope you get that. <laughs> but yeah, this is my actual this is a time capsule right here. Yeah. This yeah. is my actual Sega Hotline folder. Wow. Upside, cool. down. Upside, Upside down. Upside down because I didn't really, <laughs> I, I didn't plan that well at the time. <laughs> and you can see the wow. Terra Drive. That's cool, man. Yeah, so that, that was a black. I've, I've got three of these made up. I know so many people, like personally myself as well, that I have barely anything from my past because I've just had to move so much, you know. And it, yeah. I always find it fascinating when I, people I talk to, or you know, you and all that, um, bring out all this stuff from the history. It's like, man, I, I could only I just think about the amount of stuff that I just don't have. Like oh, there, there's there's plenty of stuff that stuff. I've that I've thrown out that I wish I had kept. So much stuff, um, yeah. and I wish I had have stolen more from the Sega Hotline because <laughs> they were chucking stuff out, and I had no yeah. no knowledge of that. And they were throwing out all the proms, the e proms uh, oh. for games that were half com yeah beaters. Be There's beaters yeah. that were being thrown out left, right, and center. I don't know if they would oh. still be surviving today, even if I did keep them. But I would have worked on a way to preserve them onto disc and then eventually onto uh, the cloud. Um, now, one of my yeah. dream is to get a lot of the original Xbox demo discs and 360 demo discs. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I want to get like a, whole, a complete lot of those because yeah, there's there a few are... people doing that. I've noticed online, they yeah, go yeah. around trying to find a demo disc. I, I never really looked at it as being a thing, but um, there are some demos yeah. on those discs that have games that never got released. So the only way to play those games are on those discs. And uh, I'd weird? like to go back yeah. and explore that. That would make a good video to just uh, have a yeah. whole stack of those and then do a whole video of five games that never got released. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I've been looking at them on eBay and they're just very expensive. But And if I ever do that voiceover on my own channel, please unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, to be fair, I did buy a Super Nintendo while working at the Sega Hotline. Um, <gasps> I've, I've, I've been on... <laughs> Who did that? Uh, who scoffed? Who scoffed? Uh, I, I've, who gone, scoffed? I've gone on record many times saying that I was pl playing Street Fighter 2 while taking uh, Sega calls. Um, the CEO saw that, didn't bat an eyelid, just kept walking. Re research. Research. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm exploring the competition to see, see what they're doing, you know? Like, yeah, know your enemy. <laughs> yeah, you got to know your enemy. Yeah. Um, I Look, I... I learnt to accept Nintendo. I, I still stand by uh, the fact that I think the NES was grossly overrated. That's my opinion. Um, I think that the Master System, the only reason why that wasn't uh, seen as the better system of the two was because of the unfair bully boy Nintendo illegal practices that were taking place back in the day. Well, they're illegal by today's standards anyway. Um, Basically telling shops, if you stock a Seeker product, we will withdraw all future products from your, your supply lines. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's crazy. Back then. Let's make up the rules as they go along. That's what they were doing. That's what they were doing. Yeah. Um, and that's why uh, a lot of the uh, developers were fleeing Nintendo because they just figured, screw this, I don't need to sign up for... Because they were also um, yeah, being very rough and bully boy with developers, saying that you can only release so many games per year. So these companies would then create uh, fake company names, uh, like yeah. uh, Tengen. Tengen was one, and uh, there was a... Uh... Oh, yeah, there's a few. There's a, it's well documented, but um, so that they could get more games out there. It was... <laughs> Why would you restrict? That's just oh, so they take away the competition from themselves. Or? Yeah, that's okay. pretty much it. Uh, and they were blaming a, uh, a chip shortage, which was, to be fair, I don't think it was hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Years. Back to the hundred <laughs> years. Sorry. Conspiracy. <laughs> uh, all right. I've, well, we've gone through the questions. Uh, so, yay. Um, yay. Yay. <laughs> we made it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start with you, uh, Uncle Chant. What have you got coming up on your channel? Plug your channel. Your minute starts now. No. Right. <laughs> yeah, you'll find me anywhere on social media and YouTube, almost anywhere under Uncle Chant. My next video, I'm going to be focusing on this Hyperkin Duke controller and how much I'm happy it exists. Uh, the next speed drawing coming up, I'm probably going to do a Queen K. Real drawing. So just stop right there, just to clarify, what what is a speed drawing? Okay, so speed drawing is I draw something on my computer on my screen here. Um, 
I record the whole time I'm drawing it and I speed it up in post. And I, depending on what the top the subject is, I'll either give commentary on it or I'll just say, look, you know, I did this. I think it's cool, and just put some music over it. Cool. And um, yes, mate. Yes, mate. He's not. He's not recording himself drawing while he's high on speed. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a ledge. You should, you should stream that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been thinking about it. I just my internet connection is not fast enough to stream in good quality. So, um, yeah, so yeah, there's a couple of things going that um, that I'm doing Queen Co. Depending on how my poll is going at the moment, it's going to be Queen Co. Real next. The gender bench, King Co. Real. I think that'll be interesting. It's just to challenge myself. I do these mm. things. I don't. I would not go out of my way any other day to draw that. Bounce but I'm just like, <laughs> I want I want something challenging to draw something I'd never do, and it's just a good excuse to increase my skill and all that. Um, more gaming related characters. I'd as like well. you to draw, if if you'd accept this challenge. <laughs> okay, bring it on. What the PlayStation Five will look like. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I don't think I've drawn a concept box before. I don't, I don't know if you if you're willing to accept it, because um because. You watch all the fake renders, all the fake uh, leaks will be coming out over the next uh, year or two. We are now heading in towards, uh, what, uh, what's it called, Project Scarlet? That's yeah. the Xbox one. Um, what are they going to call it? What are they going to call that machine? Because they've really screwed up their naming convention, haven't they? Xbox One. All in one. I think X- that, that was Xbox the whole next. target for that. Xbox uh, Next. <laughs> I, hope, I hope they just go back to Xbox. Oh wow! That no, please yeah. not. We need two <laughs> Xboxes, do we? No, uh, I'd, I'd it's confusing cool enough as we, we say Xbox. Hey, like, you mean I original? They go into a platform. <laughs> anyway. so, 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 this is back back to chance. This is his advertising little spill. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll wrap it up. So yeah, Uncle Son, anywhere you want to search me for, I'm probably there or not. Um, so yeah, you can tune into my stuff. It's just my random thoughts on things, my speed drawings on random stuff gaming related comic book stuff and toy reviews and a duke review coming up so if you're interested in that kind of stuff do it cool and john where can we find Uh, you you can find me on um twitter at wago h-w-a-y-g-o it's down there um yeah also do uh the game the system podcast with a couple of friends of mine we talk about lots of arcade and pinball um and retro Mostly retro, yeah, and sometimes board games, pretty much any any kind of game. So um, that's pretty cool. You can check that out at gamethesystem.co, not com, co. Co, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Pretty much it, yeah. And Retro Kaiser. You can find me at quite a few places. You can fi- follow me on Twitter at um, the at sign. Um, I think it's Retro Kaiser or Kaiser Cade now. Either way, it will be I'm, down I'm, there. It will be down there. Okay. Yeah. You're going to have to find me at um, Instagram at KaiserKVHS. You can also you can also check my website or a website I'm part of called www.emeraldrangers.com. Oh, shit. Um, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. Never fails. He never oh. fails. He always has to go away at least once. We waited all that time for this. <laughs> My um, <laughs> Emerald Rangers jacket. Oh, oh no. nice, nice. <laughs> that is yeah, actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, so you can find some of my written stuff at www.angelriders. What the hell is that? No. <laughs> I thought he was going <laughs> to say www. something else Emerald there. Riders. <laughs> Not Emerald Riders. EmeraldRangers.com. Gone from a- Angel Angel Riders, <laughs> Emerald Riders to. EmeraldRangers.com. Yeah. No dot AUs, no dot, just dot com. No, it's it's an international collective. Awesome. Members from around the world. And, and what and, do um, we find on that channel? Or that website? Mainly um, reviews of Japanese um, tokusatsu shows like Power Rangers, Kamen Rider. Mm. Hell yeah. We even, got a, we even got a new fourth member called Blue Diamond. She's covering Ghost in the Shell at the moment. Oh, a tokus. No. <laughs> and All right. coming and should be coming out this Tuesday actually Kaiser Cade 5 <laughs> which is also oh. my birthday oh, oh happy birthday oh, and, day, um, real smooth there Retro Kaiser uh, <laughs> Kaiser sorry 
All right, and Wayne, we can't find you anywhere. You just no, don't I, do I, I'm going to come media. out after this, and I'm not going to have to worry about editing or any of that. I'm just going to go home and play games. Uh, good luck, guys. Hey? Nice. <laughs> you, actually, on average, it takes around about two to three hours to edit one of them. Yeah, that's yeah. that's all the little graphics time, you know? that you see. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, and your little mention of the uh, jacket is a nice little segue. I've got merchandise you'll see uh, <laughs> available uh, on my link below. Um, I've started with a long sleeve tee since Spacey's with the new uh, logo that someone here did. I'm not too sure who. Oh, this this handsomely beautiful man right here. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you, cunt. I thought I didn't draw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm starting off with the long sleeve tees. Uh, and next month you'll be getting... It's amazing how many people are asking for hoodies. So you'll be getting them next month. Uh, it will feature... I still haven't finalised the design, but what I'm going for is the same as the tee. Uh, since... Since Spacey's logo on the front and the icon on the back. Um, yeah, it looks really good, man. Just uh, saying. Uh, until I get a cease and desist for using the uh, Space Invaders logo. We'll see how that goes. No, it's not a cease and Are you listening, logo. Tano? Tano, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> I have an alternative one that we've come up with that if that event ever does it eventually yep. yeah that's all good um and as for videos we'll I'll be obviously putting this out very shortly but uh i've also got uh six videos that are left to be edited uh let's plays featuring cam hans the guy that did the musical question um i have that was about a month ago i've still got to get around to editing it's, those it's so insane. they'll be coming up on the channel and uh also don't forget to check out the ministry of retro gaming uh, .co.uk for all the other ministers and their content as well. Guys, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, so good that we did it four times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, just a quick mention the top loader. Oh, uh, rest in originally peace. Originally, was. On the uh, rest in peace, mate. Yeah. Nah, he's had, he, he was meant what to be. Uh, he, he was meant to be here today. He was in last week's uh, uh, episode, but... Um, twice. Twice, yes. <laughs> um, but he is a really awesome dad, and uh, he had to tend to a judo session because his little mm. kid wanted him to be there. And when mm. he showed a picture of his kid, he said, can you say no to this kid? So, mm. Top we... load of trivia. He's a judo sensei. He is too. Yeah. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> the energy's got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the earth. <laughs> we love Good him. Up. We love him. We're only putting crap on him because, well, he, he likes getting crap on. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> hey, man, some people are into that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm getting out of here. This is getting weird. My name has been Brian, and I've been gaming since Spaceys. Thanks, guys. Toodle See ya. Toodles. <laughs>